Just getting ready for our uh, guide to show up this morning. We're meeting with an Aboriginal woman by the name of Lois Cook. And uh, she is uh, one of the local tribes people here in the Byron Bay region. So we're going to go and learn a lot about their Dreamtime stories, see some sacred sites. Um, and who knows, I don't really know what's on the agenda today, although I have um, had a, a, a message exchange with Lois and she sounds like a really lovely person and like she knows her stuff really. So we're just waiting for her to come and pick us up. wetlands and that was our supermarket so this is native australian rice this is bush tucker and this is, this is lois this is my guide lois cook today and she's showing me how to uh, find Ooh. bush tucker <laughs> Do you know it's kind of got an almondy type taste to it, doesn't it? Mm. Mm. What does that remind so me of? They can, you know, boil them up and things like it's that. Just coming on now with some flowers. Yeah. Midgen berry. Midgen berry. And here is, is the one we use for fibre. We use the young ones rather than the big tree because the big tree is this one here. Uh, and that's where we get the fruit from. Uh, sarsaparilla. Sarsaparilla. These young leaves, they're the ones that we chop up very finely and put it in our salad. It's, it's like a medicine, it's good for your blood. But a nice big leaf like this, you could fold that, put your fish inside of that, mm. and then you'd wrap that with um, paper bark and make a little parcel and tie it up and that would give flavouring, but you'd also smash the roots and put that in too. And it tastes like ginger. Ginger, that's native ginger. Wow. All that cottonwood. Cottonwood. It's a, it's a, it's and like it's a tree. Why so they call it cottonwood is because of the layers oh. of the wood. So the wood, um, what we traditionally did was um, make a small fire, heat it up, and it would then separate from the trunk. The bark would separate from the trunk. And there's another layer in the middle of that is what we use to make string so it's very sticky so sometimes the men would use that straight up just to wrap around their spear points and hold it in place and then they'd go out and they get the black boy um, sap melt that and put that around it as well then that would be like super glue in fact it's better than super glue and it's harder than super glue and it lasts a lot longer and the women then if they wanted to make other things they would soak those fibers in water and wash it out and then make rope string nets that kind of thing that's why it's cotton cottonwood yeah. way more way more versatile than actual cotton and you could use the trunk then you can straighten out the trunk yeah. to make a spear and it's nice and light and when you throw it it'll float ah so there you go hunting and gathering in one <laughs> the cottonwood is the soft wood. We'd cut the section out of that, make little holes in it, yeah. and that's we'd use a hard wood, so it's soft and hard. So when we do the rubbing the two sticks together yeah. onto the soft wood, which is the cottonwood, that would make the uh, ashes you put into the husk um, that would probably come off the um, bangalo tree and blow it. And then it would catch fire. Catch from fire. A little bit of ashes that was created from the dust that was created from the two frictions, the hardwood and the softwood. So oh, it's a turkey nest. Oh, that's a bush turkey nest. Yeah. It's like compost. Yeah. And then it builds up heat. And then that hatches the eggs. Oh. Funny enough, the male looks after the chicks. Oh, that's cute. The women lay their eggs. Do you hear that too? And the male looks after <laughs> the chicks. <laughs> They're the ones you throw in your salad. Oh, yum! See? So this is bush they have got a salad. Little bit of tarty flavour, but yeah, well, we made our dressings and stuff too, you know.
walk down to Suffolk Park yeah. and go in there. There's a, there's a lagoon there, there's a lake. So the big lake is a men's lake, okay. and the uh, small lake is a women's bathing lake. Oh, Suffolk Park. Yeah, uh, that's where our women were like shaman. We use crystals for healing. So, we're, yeah, we have a lot of commonness with a lot of um, different cultures. There's loads, isn't there, between the different indigenous shamanic cultures that, that they have in common, but different interpretations and language and threads, but... Yeah, uh, it just expands a little bit more. It's like the cross. The wooden cross originally came from Australia. That's our symbol for the Creator. Oh. But then it became... Well, of course, because you've got the Southern Cross in the sky, don't you? But we invented the... When we did our communication circles, we called them the the um, um, stone arrangement, those stone arrangements had a cross in the middle of it. Wow. That's our sign for the Creator. And, and then we took that further. So when the Aboriginal people saw them, uh, Christians coming in with a cross, they trusted them immediately, I guess. Creator, like, oh, the sign look. of the Creator. Oh my God. Like, hey, the Creator's come here, but they weren't here to help us. Wow. dolphins out there. Can you see dolphins? Well, there's something coming up and going back down. See it there again. Whenever there's dolphins it means that you're safe. See there? Yeah. Oh. Right in the middle you see it dumping every now and then. Oh yeah and there's birds out there. There's oh dolphin. there's dolphins. Can and Lois that's your yeah, that's your totem animal. Yeah yes. We've got a dolphin gerbil in um, Ballina. What do you call it? Gerbil's an increase site. Oh, I want to see more. I saw one over there. Come higher up. I can see them jumping. Just out here. I saw one do a bit. There's another one. Yeah. There's another one. Oh, up there and they're swarming, swarming yeah. around there. Yeah, yeah. With them, I with see them, yeah, one. with that water's all bit. Water's all bubbling there. We can talk to them. Oh, ah, yeah. And uh, they so they'd show you where to drive go. Drive our fish, drive the fish into our nets. Or drive them onto the uh, onto the sandbank yeah. for our people to pick up and yeah, and then we'd give them you know a good feed. Give them a portion of the of the of the wind. So yes, yeah, so we traditionally use dolphins for fishing and hunting. They're so intelligent, aren't they? Yeah. I believe dolphins were humans. Yeah. And then our people went back into the ocean and became dolphins. Oh. Especially in the southern hemisphere find that the dolphins came out of the water and became humans and then on the eastern side they went into the water and became dolphins. That's in South America, that's in, in um, New Zealand, a few places like that. Is that coming out and going in? Yeah, it's like the cycles isn't it? <laughs> Death, rebirth, regeneration. Rebirth. Come for a walk. He's guiding the way. <laughs> What's what was that? that? Oh, I hope it wasn't a snake. <laughs> sounded more was, scurrying than. Ran. <laughs> yeah, it was scurrying. It had legs. <laughs> Ooh. Probably was a Three sisters, what? Yes. That's a woman's sign. But it's also a sign about the treacherous waters. So we have a story, you know, passed down to our ancestors about this area where people were camping here, involved in cultural business practices and things like that. And there's a little boy, and he was uh, he wanted to go swimming, and the, the people said to him, "Don't go out too far because there's a rip there." He didn't listen. He went out too far and he got caught in the rip. So that's him over there laying down on his side. Oh, you see yeah. that little rock over there? It looks like a human being lying down it on does. his side. Yeah. So that's a little boy. And he called out to one of the sisters to come and rescue him. Well, she swam out. That's that rock there. She swam out to save him. But she got caught in the rip too. Then she sang out to her other sister, this one here in the front, to come and help her to get out of the, the rip. And she got caught too. So when you look over there, you see her mouth open. Yeah, you can see her face. The shoulders and the face and everything. Yeah. So she called out to the third sister 
that was here on the land to help them but she couldn't help them because there's already got three of them so she conjured up a spell and turned them into stone to stop them from drowning to stop them drowning yeah and so the, the third sister if you was if you was walking along that beach where i told you yeah walking along to the women's uh, lake and the, the men's sacred lake too you can see this story evolve and you can see that the sisters swimming you can see them rescuing all that so you just watch the rocks as you're coming along the beach and it's like watching a cartoon oh, they change. Wow. yeah so that's interesting to know what if you have more time you can watch that evolve yeah even though that's the, the rice so that's the rice and but that's for weaving. What is this called? This is, um, we call this blade grass, I think. Here yeah, or um, mat rush. Mat rush. Mat rush. See there, you've got the brownie. There's the rice. It's coming out. Yeah. That's delicious. How long does it take you, to, if you were going to harvest that for a meal, how long would that take you? Well, we'd, we'd probably smack it. Yep. You know, we'd have our mats and things like that that we weave and we'd be throwing it up in the air for the husk blow away and then see drops. But it makes you appreciate your food more when you've harvested it and you've created it yourself, right? You've yeah, yeah. grown it, you harvest it, you grind it. Yeah, yeah, that's right. We don't do that anymore. We just go to the supermarket these days. Yeah, that's right. So that's the younger plants. Mm. The view here is amazing. Okay. That's the nut. It it's like in. a pineapple, isn't it? Yeah, Does it yeah. taste like pineapple, Lois? Yeah. Oh, no, no, it's a seed. More like a seed. It's a, it's a seed inside. We throw them on the fire uh, to burn the husk around it, and then we can extract the seed, like the bunya nut. Oh, okay. You know, the bunya nuts? They've got that big seed inside of it. You take the wick out, yep. and then you can make pesto, or, you know, they're really, really nice too. King's Beach where they killed our people they made them dig a hole and moved them all into the hole and then they just shot them all and macheted them a couple of people got away and they hid in the caves over there that's why I know it was the King's Cave but what Byron Shire did was they changed the name of the beaches so they no so one could record it they went and put White's Beach over there now which is what they call Bray's Beach I think we're going there tonight and, to and watch uh, the moon so that's the King's Beach don't go too close to where the rocks are on the southern side okay because that's where the massacre site is okay in the beach on the southern side oh okay they made they buried them in the beach made them dig a hole and then what, they what year did that happen 1858 1858 they passed a law that was you know basically they could kill off the aboriginal people like vermin like how they call kangaroos oh, it was, now it was, right like animals well basically it was a robinson act yeah the robinson act came in uh 19 in 1861 yeah. which converted squatters land to freehold title and they had the laws of england yeah and because the laws of england you pe shoot people on site for trespass trespass and then they also said didn't they have something like if there are people there then you can't take the name in the name of it could take the land in the name of the king but if there aren't people there you can so they were just killing people so that they would say there are no people we here, occupied right? all our land all the land exactly yeah, that's right we just had different camps and different seasons and things like that um uh, we shared different resources with other neighboring tribes as well and other countries we know well if they wanted to come to a country and go to another person's country they put the wattle wattle um across their shoulders yeah and that was a signal to the other neighboring tribes that they were just passing through Aww. and so they weren't looking for a fight or weren't look, yeah it's peace like a peace um it was a peace yeah peace signal uh, yeah so we, we also uh knew a lot of um signals with a lot of other groups that visited australia too yeah. uh, and used um, some signals uh, with other Euro European countries that meant peace yeah. as well in Sydney. So we're going to attack this group in South Australia and um, one of the Aboriginal men stood up and gave a signal and it was recognised by the white people. Um, what's those old, uh, what do they call them? Um, they they travelled all around the world, it starts with an M. Babara. Babara is the creator. Okay. So, 
And does that translate, is that the same, uh, so Barbara is the creator, but that's different to Biambi in Central Coast, or is it yeah. the same being? Then we have Baba. Baba okay. means above, you know. So. Barbara is creator as in God, yeah. or divine? The divine. The divine, and then what we learn in the Central Coast is Biambi, was like a man that came from the sky. Yeah. So they're two different beings. Similar. Similar, but, similar but different. Yeah. So Biambi could have been an alien being, talk about, talking about an alien being coming to visit Earth. Yes, and marrying one of the local tribal women. Yeah. Because he did, didn't they? They talked about him having a wife. And then he descended, but he ascended again as well. He went back there. Yeah, and his... Um, the story of, that's very similar to Egypt as well because the story of Biami is very similar to Osiris and Isis and Horus yes. and they talk about Orion's belt being his um, initiation belt. Yes. Yeah. So interesting, the links are amazing. Constellation, when initiation rites began. Yeah. But we had the uh, rain making ceremonies. So when the rain making ceremonies started, there'd be a certain constellation of stars in the sky. Oh right, which yep. indicated to the other tribes of Australia to come in. Right. So as it moved across Australia, so we had people from the sandy deserts, from Western Australia, South Australia, the Northern Territory. Some of them walk for two to three years to get here yep. for ceremony. Some of them, all song lines lead here. So, when it came to be going home, if they didn't bring their wives with them, they would stay here. Some would go back home, but not all. So that's how we replenished our bloodline again. So is that why this land here is so important? Did all the song lines link up here? Yes. Wow, so this is a bit like the meeting point of all the history. Not necessarily here, but the laws here. The laws here. Um, but the song line for the, for the um, rain maker for the rain was maker. down at Evans Head. Okay. My great grandfather used to lead those ceremonies. That was wow. Bubba Jack Cook. He was uh, adopted by Henry Cook, yeah. who was an early settler. He came to the Richmond River in 1823 he already had his family in 1858 um, massacres occurred in our area one down near Wardell and um, his mother was on the run and so she knew what Henry was doing that he had uh, some cattle grazing so she went out to where he was when she ran from the massacre at Wardell and left her child there for Henry to take home Aww. and so Henry reared up this full-blooded Aboriginal child and uh, he followed the tribes oh. so that this young baby could be able to ground itself with its own native people. In the culture with the people. The with the people. That's a good thing to do. So he went and followed them up to uh, Riley's Hill, just south of Ballina, and uh, that's where he was reared up until Henry died. Henry got cooked in, cooked, I mean kicked in the head <laughs> by a horse and died instantly. Oh. So Poor Henry. Then his brother, Samuel Cook, who was a pioneer of the timber industry, the cattle industry, um, the dairy industry and the boat building industry. So my great grandfather was read up by his brother then from the age of 12. Wow. And my, he had interests all along the coast up as far as Cairns. So my great-grandfather would travel with him. My great-grandfather spoke at least a dozen languages. Wow. Uh, he came back here. Um, so he was involved with, with Samuel in the boat building, the cattle, and transportation, and building boats. So my great-uncles knew how to build boats without using nails. So like an exchange of knowledge, isn't it? It's, yeah, so yeah. taught my great-grandfather a lot of stuff. Yeah and showed him country as well uh, and protected him from um, the invaders killing him. Yeah. Uh, read him up as their own 
uh, Henry, when he died, he gave my great grandfather land, but grandfather wasn't allowed to have it because he was Aboriginal. They wouldn't allow Aboriginal people to own, own land. Kids. Isn't that just unbelievable? It's the, it's the Aboriginal people's land to begin with. They wouldn't allow us to own anything. So they kept this poor until 87. Then they um, gave us uh, the right to vote. And yeah. when they gave us, when the Australian people, white people voted to give Aboriginal people the right to vote in their election, they then decided that they have powers to make laws for us. And what year, so what year did you get the right to vote? 67. 67. How recent is that? When they had the First World War and the Second World War, they were still having backyard killings. Jesus. And taking the children from them. Oh, no, none of that. Kill them. Oh, Jesus. It's backyard killings. They can get 70, 80 people at a time and uh, make them dig a hole and shoot them all or build a big fire and um, it's a holocaust. quarter them, quarter them and throw them on the fire. Yeah. So in all the archaeological work that I've done, yeah. I haven't found the remains of a male. Oh my God. So it's all women cool and children. Men, mainly women and children. I still to this day haven't found the remains of man. It's a, it's, a, it's a holocaust and they don't even talk about it. Yet, you know, they shame Germany, <laughs> you know, and Rwanda, and then they hide it here. Well, it's all about the land, it's, it's all about so greed, sad. it's all about the money. Yeah. Seeing that they've brought in bad um, practices, yep. uh, bad agricultural practices. They're turning our fertile lands into deserts because they're giving them the wrong advice on how to look after the country here. We are not England. No. We have a different climate. Totally different. You take out all the undergrowth, yeah. you kill all that, nothing will grow. I think, I think the governments here need to be taking advice from we the Aboriginal don't. people. When the warriors came back from uh, Mount Bougaram with the law, and they came back to their family, this uh, Lake Ainsworth is where they were baptised. Oh. That was the first baptism. Wow. What, that was performed 45,000 years ago. Wow. It all links up, doesn't it? Yes. Because so. I know what I know of John the Baptist is that he were, he he went to Egypt. Him and Christ and Mary Magdalene, they all studied in ancient Egypt. So I think they got a ride they, over here. They got it from you guys. First. But they got a ride over here. Yeah. Jesus disappeared for 17 years. He did, yeah. And where was he? He was in Australia. Wow. When and you go to Uden and Dada, yep. Uden and Dada, just south of um, Alice Springs, yep. there's uh, a cave there. And uh, they say that these are. There's footprints at the front of that cave. Yep. And they say they're Jesus' footprints. Wow. They do, they call it Jesus. They, they went all over the world, didn't they? They pilgrimage. They went to um obviously they went to France and Scotland, but I know that he also there's stories that he went to India. So if he went to India, why wouldn't he have come this well, far south? If he linked up if yeah. he linked up with the Egyptians, he would yeah. have travelled. He would have travelled. And the same with our people, we travelled with the Egyptians too. Yeah. Like South America, they found human remains uh, in a burial site in South America was two Aboriginal men buried together. Wow. From Australia. Yeah. And you get all the symbols on uh, a lot of the temples and stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, our symbols for gathering places, uh, boomerangs. There's also notches, which is like the dot. Yep. Um, if you see one dot, it means beware. Two dots, um, you know, very sacred. Three dots, very, very sacred. Don't come here. Yeah. It's like a warning. Like a warning. And w and the other warning we used was uh, the scar tree. The scar tree would tell us that there's a ceremonial place up ahead, or it would tell us uh, that it's a place uh, where certain business was practices were carried out. Uh, the size of it did matter. So the big one would have been a canoe. Yeah. The smaller ones maybe Kullerman. Yep. And then, uh, then there's warning ones, letting you know that there is a ceremonial ground or boring up ahead, wow. or a gathering place. It's like road maps. So yeah, some of our stone arrangements were.
proper road, road maps too and it would tell you the story uh, written similar to Shakespeare about the country and the land and the people. Yeah. But a lot of those were destroyed by sand miners. They came in and destroyed a lot of our, our sacred uh, talking or, stones. Or the carvings and things. Talking yeah, stones. Talking so, stones. Yeah. We have a stone hedge as well up at the Mullumbimbi. Uh, they called it um, Adam's Garden. I don't know where they got that. No, it must be Adam and Eve. But um, the white people called it Adam's Garden. It was uh, the stone hedge at Mullumbimbi is older than stone hedge. Wow. Uh, they got the big stones and those stones actually talk and they're in a certain position to tell a story. As well as uh, it, was a, it was a meeting place of ceremony. It's an educational place as yeah. well. But yeah. um, there is, we also believe it was a vortex. Yeah. Was it astrologically aligned as well? Yeah. Yeah. And it was also my great uncle talked about vortexes, about travel, how we could spiritually travel from here to another place and go through those um, timelines and uh, go to another place in Australia or the world yep. and it's like a vortex you go through and you'd appear there yeah it's like, like time sending travel. an email it is like sending an email only we're going through the, the ley lines yeah so ley lines to us too come up with um, let's say uh, song lines I was gonna say are ley lines linked to song lines yes they it's are. the same sort of thing or well it's about many many thousands of years of walking country in the same places and doing ceremony Singing up country, uh, sharing stories, our heritage, uh, and a beautiful place to camp and be in solidarity with those people that we're sharing with in spirit. And so the ley lines, yeah, so we call them song lines. Beautiful. Yeah, because you'd sing the stories, or you'd say the stories and walk the lines, right? <laughs> Yeah. and killing the coral reef. 